This is Steve Robbins. Welcome to the Get It Done Guys, quick and dirty tips to work less and do more. They say that learning how to get motivated is the golden ticket to the chocolate factory of life. And at the very least, if you happen to own a chocolate factory, knowing how to motivate employees will allow you to convince an entire race of Oompa Loompas to come be your workforce and the world's largest green-faced, orange-haired a cappella singing group while they're at it. Let's return to that bastion of motivation, the gym. Recently, I spent three weeks traveling. The hotel gym was small, and there was no one else there to admire my manly man body as I picked up and put down heavy objects. <laughs> this made picking up and putting down seem so much more pointless than it had been before. I mean, I'm not saying that being admired is how I motivate myself to go to the gym. I'm just saying that without the admiration, well, picking up and putting down heavy objects just isn't as engaging as it might otherwise be. So I didn't work out for the entire three weeks of my trip. And when I returned home, I informed trainer Steve, my current trainer, that I hadn't worked out while traveling. <laughs> you doofus, he proclaimed. You have to work out. Otherwise, you'll never get the results you want. You will become a slug, a lump. You will be a couch potato who does nothing but watch TV all day. I was furious, not because he was right. Of course he wasn't right. I was furious because he was taking the area of my life where I'm super proud and trying to turn it into a cauldron of shame, despair, and apparently daytime television. Steve's intentions were good. He wanted to show how to motivate yourself to keep up with a gym routine. He was concerned that all the manly man muscles I've worked so hard for would go away, or at least get slightly mushy, or maybe hidden under a teensy little layer of... of, uh, F -f 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 um, a teensy little layer of f -f 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 fat. Nonsense. You see, he was using the wrong motivational words. By telling me all of the bad things that would happen, he was pounding me with a stick, hoping that I would change my behavior to avoid the stick. This is called away from motivation. It comes from wanting something bad to stop. In the workplace, you see away from motivation all the time when people want to eliminate defects in a product. They want to reduce the number of defects, or reduce customer complaints, or keep a competitor from gaining market share. Away from motivation triggers the fight-or-flight response, so it's really good for kicking people into action. Most advertising works on away from motivation. Your nose will fall off and people will laugh at you unless you buy our product, so buy it now because otherwise you're a loser. <laughs> this works because away from motivation really does get people to act. If the action in front of them is to buy your product or service, well then, that's what they'll do. My gym motivation, however, is not based on fear of bad things. Now, it was at the very start, with the discovery that I didn't fit into my suit pants anymore. I thought, OMG, I'm turning into a couch avocado. Same shape, different plant. That away from motivation kicked me into action. But, as I relate in my episodes on becoming a gym stud or studette, what kept me going back was very different. It was seeing the improvement in my manly man physique and making friends with the whole gym community. That's towards motivation. It's motivation that comes from wanting more of something in your life. It comes from wanting a carrot and moving towards it. The carrot, of course, is a metaphor. You could be wanting any root vegetable. In the workplace, you see towards motivation when people want to increase market share. That means they want to move towards more market share. They want to win a contract or they want to increase customer satisfaction. Those motivations come from wanting more of something. Both towards and away from are valuable. They do different things, and we use them in combination. Away from motivation kicks you into action, but it doesn't tell you which way to go. Towards motivation gives direction to your efforts once you're kicked into action. Both are necessary. What Steve didn't understand is that when you want to know how to motivate yourself or how to motivate employees to do something, it works best to use the motivation that works for those individuals naturally. My gym motivation is towards being social. An empty hotel gym doesn't inspire me because my motivational element is missing. Now, Steve was trying to use the away from being a slug motivation. And although that was the very important trigger that got me to start working with trainer Tyler all those years ago, it's not the motivation that keeps me going. The extreme mismatch not only didn't motivate me, it actively made me resist. To discover someone's motivation, or even your own, ask them, what will doing, whatever the thing is that they want to be motivated about, do for you? For example, what will going to the gym do for you? The phrasing is very important, because what will it do for you is neither a towards or an away from phrasing. 
The person will respond, Going to the gym will let me see my friends, get a great body, and avoid being a slug all at once. And if you listen carefully to that sentence, that's two towards items, towards friends and a great body, and one away from, away from being a slug. In the future, if you want to help them get motivated, give them two towards and one away from motivation. If they say they're having trouble finishing a report for a client, you can say, finishing the report will bring in lots of money. You'll feel great about finishing and the client won't complain. That's towards money and feeling and away from client complaints. How to get motivated can change from context to context, so you can't assume the motivation style in one area will carry over to a different area. For example, I go to the gym and I walk everywhere. Sounds healthy, right? Well, sort of. I'm driven towards the gym by wanting a manly man body and by wanting to be social. But I walk mainly because I am motivated away from driving. The fact that walking is good exercise and helps the manly man body initiative is actually not part of the equation. They may appear to be two similar behaviors, but going to the gym comes from a towards motivation and walking comes from an away from motivation. Using towards and away from to choose motivational words, you can motivate yourself and the people around you. Notice where motivation is coming from avoiding something bad and where it comes from being drawn towards a goal. And then when you want to motivate yourself or others, use the right mix of carrot and stick. Now, when Steve wants me to work harder, he shows me a shirtless picture of Zac Efron and he asks, do you want to look like that? My towards motivation kicks in big time, and yours can too. Whether you're managing yourself or learning how to motivate the Oompa Loompas in your chocolate factory, forgetting the towards away from distinction will doom you forever, while remembering towards and away from will help you take over the chocolate industry with panache. See what I did there? I'm Steve Robbins. You can find this episode's transcript at getitdone.quickanddirtytips.com with links to the episodes on gym motivation. I help CEOs and executives make their companies bigger, better, stronger, faster, and more profitable. If you want to know more, visit steverrobbins.com. That's S-T-E-V-E-R-R-O-B-B-I-N-S dot com. Work less, do more, and have a great life. <laughs>